All right, this is video four for the rotation unit. In this one, we're going to talk about equilibrium. So in the past, an object was in equilibrium when the net force acting on everything, or acting on the object, was zero. Well, now we have to include torque. The net torque acting on the object must be zero as well. So we have equilibrium when these two conditions are met. So a classic problem that every physics teacher likes to ask is the latter problem. This is a very, very uh, old and classic problem. So basically, if you know the coefficients of static friction for all surfaces and the mass of the ladder, what angle can you prop it against the wall so that it stays put and doesn't slide off? So this is, uh, yeah, settle in, this is a very long and complex problem, but it's one that's important to see. So first off, we're going to say that we know the coefficient of friction at the floor. I'll call that mu1. And the coefficient of friction, mu2, at the wall. And really what we're trying to find is what angle relative to the floor can I place that ladder so that it stays and doesn't slide? Now we need to start talking about all, the, all, of, all of the forces. Well, I don't want the ladder to slide, so I need to have some friction. I'll call that friction one right there. Wherever you have friction, you're going to have a normal force. At the wall, I don't want the top of the ladder to slide down, so I have friction 2 there, and then perpendicular to that, I have my normal force. You know, wherever you have friction, you have normal force. This ladder, at its center of mass, has weight. And there we have it. So we have those forces acting on the ladder. The first step is to find the net force or to make sure the net force is zero. So I'm going to take a look at the net force just on the x-axis. So looking at the net force on the x-axis I see that I have that normal force in two um, minus this friction one. Those are the only two forces on the x-axis and they have to equal zero. So N2 equals friction F1. So N2 equals mu1 times N1. I'll call that my equation 1. The next thing I'm going to look at is the sum of forces on the y-axis. So there I had that F2. I have this N1 minus the weight of the ladder, again that should equal zero. So rearranging for variables, so I have this uh, mu two n2 plus n1. I, I want to start getting rid of some things. So I'm going, I'm going to notice that in equation 1 I have something for n2. It's mu1 n1. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So this fg equals mu2 mu1 n1. I'm going to do that because I want to start getting rid of some of these extra variables to make life a little bit easier. Okay, now I have to do my torque stuff. Before you can do torque, you must choose a pivot point. And I'm going to choose my pivot point to be right down here. So I'm going to see if the, the ladder is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise about that pivot. Now we need to start taking a look at some... Uh, and also, I need to start figuring out some angles. You see... I want 
all of my forces to be perpendicular to my lever arm. The lever arm is the ladder itself. So I'm going to draw some reference lines here. And I'm going to draw one up here. So I'm just drawing some lines that are perpendicular or normal to that ladder. And then I'm going to start finding these forces that are perpendicular. So, um, you know, if my angle gamma at the ladders here, gamma would also be found right here. So this right here would be my force, G, that's perpendicular to my lever arm. And notice that uh, I would use, um, if I were to make like a, a right triangle here, I would use the cosine function for that. Uh, gamma would be found right up here. So um, my N2, if gamma is found there, gamma would also be found right here. So this right here would give me my N2 perpendicular and then this right here would be my friction F2 perpendicular and I can like I said I can make some lines to figure out which one's perpendicular and which one's not all right net torque has to equal zero. So let's start with uh, the, the forces that will cause a positive torque. So ones that will go um, counterclockwise. So I see that this FG perpendicular tries to make it go counterclockwise. That F2 and the N2 are trying to make it go clockwise. So there's one force going positive, two forces going negative. So um, I have this FG and looking at FG to make it perpendicular, notice I have to use the cosine function. So that's my force. Now my lever arm distance is L over 2, where L is the total length of the ladder. Minus. Okay, now I have N2. And notice I have to use sine of gamma. And its lever arm distance is just L. It's at the very end of that ladder. Minus F2. And here I have to use the cosine function to get its perpendicular. And the total length is at the very end, so the total length is L. And all those torques need to add up to give me zero. If you need to, pause the video at this point and look at the geometry to see if all of that makes sense. Okay, next things I need to do, so well, really, just some algebra. Uh, notice that all these L's are going to cancel. So what I'm left with, I have this one half FG cosine of my angle minus N2 sine my angle minus F2 cosine of my angle equals zero. And now I can start plugging some things in. Um, equation two down here gives me something that I can plug in for FG. Uh, equation 1 gives me something I can plug in for N2. And friction F2 is the same thing as mu2, mu times normal force. However, uh, again, I see an N2 here, which I can plug in for.
because I want to get everything in terms of N1. Uh, you'll notice I also did something fun here. I uh, went ahead and added the mu1 n1 sine theta or sine uh, gamma to the other side. I did that for a reason um, to get my cosines and sines on their respective sides. And also, um, just to point out, I'm going to, well, this should be pretty cool here. I'm going to take my cosine gamma and I'm going to distribute it through this. Get rid of this parentheses here. So I have one half. And I want to point out this term and this term. They're the same, except that one's positive one half and the other one's negative one. So when you add those together, you get negative one half. Okay, starting to look a little better now. Just put a reference line in here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to recognize that N1 is in all three terms here, so it cancels out. So N1 is gone, and I'm going to factor out a cosine theta, so I'm uh, left with this. I see a sine and a cosine. Um, well, if I do sine divided by cosine, that equals tangent. I'm also going to do a little bit of math up here. So, to figure out what that angle would need to be, I would have that expression right there. Now, granted, this was a huge problem. You will never find anything like this on the EP exam. I only do it because... Um, I like math, and secondly, because you might see this if you take a college physics course. Um, so, hopefully in the future you can reference back to this to help you if you come across this problem. Let's look at something that you might actually see on the AP physics exam. Um, so we have two rocks placed on a wooden plank. One rock is four times the mass of the other one. If each rock is placed on the end of the plank, where should you place the fulcrum to keep the system in equilibrium? Okay, um, so I'm going to put this relative to the 4M, so my answer will be X. X will equal something. Uh, this right here will be my pivot. Uh, this length right here, then, if the entire length of this plank is L, will be L minus x. Now there's going to be a force here, a gravitational force from the 4m that's trying to do 
a positive torque because it's trying to rotate it counterclockwise. There's going to be a force here from this mass. And it's trying to do a negative torque. So the sum of all torques would equal this force Fg from the point. So that's just going to be 4 mg. And the lever arm distance is going to be x. And those are perpendicular. Minus this uh, mg times L minus x. So again, force times lever arm distance. And we want the system to be in equilibrium, so it should equal 0. Okay, now we just got to do uh, a little bit of a little bit of math. Uh, notice that the mg's cancel, so I'm left with 4x minus l minus x equals zero. So that's just 4x minus l plus x equals zero, or 5x equals l, or x equals l over 5. So that would be um, probably closer to what you would find on the AP exam. Alright, that was quite a lot of math, so we're going to finish that video here.